So last year around this time, we got a letter in the mail essentially saying RSA did not qualify the standards for uh, water consumption um, for two quarters. And then a month later, we got another letter in the mail essentially saying, hey, three quarters in a row. Um, and then a month later, uh, I got another letter in the mail essentially saying, hey, Green stepped out of RSA. Um, we're going to tax you guys and pay off Green's debt. So I went to that board meeting and essentially sat there, listened to everything that was said, um, and they couldn't figure out what the problem was with the water situation at that board meeting. Now, I don't know if that's changed and they figure out what happened last year with the water situation. I mean, Mr. Johnson, Ms. Marshall, you both sit on the board for RSA, maybe you can add some color to this situation, but they couldn't figure out last year. What makes me think that you all are able to figure out what the RSA's water situation is this year when you couldn't figure out the small little thing last year? So that's my concern. My other thing that I want to address is how can we back out of RSA Green County did it. How can we get out of that as well? Because they're not, all I want is clean water for my family, my animals, and for us. And I don't want this to turn into Flint, Michigan. I don't want this to turn into Jackson, Mississippi. And I don't want to turn into East Palestine. And that is it. Like, we cannot sit here consuming toxic water because half of you guys aren't going to be here in 10 years when we're all getting cancer. That's my concern. We need to figure out the situation right now. And I understand that the community, you know, came together and they did what they needed to do, and that's great. We live in a great community, and that's what I kind of said at first. But at the same time, the lack of communication, I feel like from RSA, was not there. There is, I heard it from Facebook. RSA has everybody's communication, cell phone, emails. They should have sent out an email to policyholders, or not policyholders, but um, hey, customers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I Virginia Board of Supervisors, I thank you for the opportunity to express my concerns and share my wishes. My name is Dee Jacobson, and currently residing at Somerset Farm Subdivision. We have people in both Somerset Farm and Wilderness Shores whose water still has a smell as of this morning and for whom they have already flushed their water system. Some of the residents in these subdivisions have said some of this has been going on for five years. Several residents stated that they had not known of the first notifications to do not use until the next day. A few stated they did not receive notice until two days later. This is of concern. Should the fire department have driven around with a wall horn, given the urgency? Several residents are starting to document some of the physical symptoms being experienced around this event. I've asked them to report them to the health department. I subsequently sent an email to Brooke and she kindly replied with some actionable things that we can do, which I will share within our communities. I'm here to represent 14 families. First of all, the emergency may be over for you all, it's not for us. Right now, our water smells like diesel and WD-40. We've had people in the neighborhood run their water for an hour and a half and it still smells that way. Second of all, why did they delay reporting the problem? as long as they did. Why didn't they send the alarm out right away? What are they doing to determine the source of this so it does not continue? What is going to be done regarding the yearly statements that we've gotten for the last five years sent to customers that RSA sends regarding unsafe level of acid happening every year that is above state guidelines? When will this be brought up to the standards according to the guidelines? What are the acute and chronic health effects that we may see in the future. Personally, right now, I've got a metallic taste in my mouth and I've got sand in my eyes. It's not a great feeling. We want transparency and information to be sent out in a timely manner. Will the county pursue legal action demanding reimbursement for the water issue? They charge us three times for sewer what the water cost. We're gonna have undoubted water bills for cleaning out the dirty water they sent to our homes. It's ridiculous. 
What kind of filtration are they using? And are there any EPA representatives at these meetings to verify the information that's being provided? Lastly, we need a transparent investigation into what caused the water issue to ensure those are held accountable and it doesn't happen again. I had a statement that I wanted to say, but you guys need to understand that RSA has lost the trust of this community. Two of you reside on the board. So if I'm grateful for Supervisor Nickel to stand up and say he wasn't aware of the water issues that are plaguing the, the, the community, but two of you know. It's unacceptable. Aside from understanding what happened, it is a great implementation of the emergency plan and uh, management plan, but that's a plan that's supposed to be stayed dusty on the shelf. Great job of getting it implemented, and great job of the community for coming together and showing support. And that goes across the counties. But there needs to be accountability at the end of this. I would like to ask for the resignation of Mark Johnson and Keith Marshall, either from the Board of Supervisors or for the, from the Board of RSA. Because there's got to be a conflict of interest there. These are our lives. Clean water isn't just a, a human necessity, it's basic rights. You owe us better, and I, I, we're going to hold you accountable to it. We appreciate the, the work that you've done, but there is, as you said, Supervisor Hale, a lot of work left to do. And I hope you mean. Thank you. My name is Brett Smith. I've been a current resident in Germana Heights area since 2019 when we had our home built. We love it here in Orange. It's quaint, it's quiet, and just enough far enough away from the city limits. We moved here from Fairfax County, where I myself was raised. My wife also grew up in the Northern Virginia area. Uh, we chose to move out here to slow life down and raise our daughter properly. My father worked at Fairfax County Water Authority for over 25 years. I myself worked for over about a part of the decade. I can name two things that that 35 years of experience has never had to do. Send out continual letters because there's acids in our water that can temporarily or maybe even possibly cause cancer. And we've never had to shut down for not being able to use water. In 35 years of experience, that's never happened. And these experiences started for me well into my life of living here. So I want to put this also into perspective. The VOCs in question were chloroform and something else that I can't really pronounce, right? So the chloroform came in at 49.2 micrograms. So when you do the conversion, it comes out to 492 parts per million. The SVOC that's in question is a man-made compound that you find in herbicides and pesticides. And that was also above the reporting limit. So RSA came out and was defensive pretty much immediately over Facebook, not knowing what's going on. It's not their fault. I don't believe them. So here I'm like to trust you today to figure this out, please. It's unacceptable and I really hope you stay true to your work. Thank you. Hi, Britt Lewis, Lopez Grove, for absolute transparency. I'm on well water. I'm one of the few people up in District 4 on that side, on the very highly populated side, that is on well water. I'm just gonna bullet point some things because we have been reduced to two minutes now instead of three. Thank you, Mr. Nickel, for taking that action that you mentioned today in front of us about texting right away. The disappointing fact is that I called my board of supervisor at 19.38, at 7.38 p.m., and I was told, and I quote on speakerphone, by the way, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now, I understand that there's a whole panic of that, and I know you want to comment, and I get that, and I respect that, but it's what was said in front of many people. We were ahead of ourselves two years ago. My family, my friends, Children, my patients that I spent all night getting water to and making sure that my patients and their families had water, they deserve better. We're being held hostage in District 4 and 5. 
hostage. Right now it's in litigation, I respect that. We're being held hostage. If you don't give us World Discross, you can't have nice stuff. It's quid pro quo. Give us this and we'll give you nice stuff. Give us that and we'll give you nice stuff. If you delve back into the late 90s, it was decided then by that board that a reservoir was needed to support the growth in District 4 and 5. For old people like me, that's 30 years ago because that's when I graduated high school. That's not acceptable. And I know a lot of those problems have nothing to do with any five of you sitting here, but the five of you have opportunity for change. In addition, I really implore all of you to get on RSA. There is no reason people should have been notified that kids old enough to go home to school alone were drinking water. Elderly people without social media were drinking water, taking baths, doing everything they normally do, cooking with it. They always say failed every single citizen horribly. I also want to thank the three school board members that worked tirelessly that we were working with as well at that time. That early on before the district, sorry, the local state emergency was declared, got higher level government people involved ready to jump. Now finally, I'm going to say this, and sirs, when I say this, please understand this is not a personal attack at all. Mark and Keith, one and three, you don't drink or live or have constituents that rely on RSA. You guys have done jobs, and I appreciate that, and I'm very indebted for that, for all of our patients and our families and our friends. Crystal and Brian, it's your turn. You are the people who have constituents in RSA's area. You are the people that need to be on RSA's board and need to represent every single person out here and beyond. All right, thank so, you. Thank you very much. God bless and please, a thorough investigation. Good evening. Um, I'm yeah, from Liberty Boulevard in Lake of the Woods, and I'm very surprised there hasn't been any Lake of the Woods residents here. Um, so I'll share what I know about what's going on in Lake of the Woods along with my questions. Um, so again, nothing is personal, and I appreciate all the work that went in the community came together, and that was a wonderful thing. Um, however, there was a lot of issues in this situation, a lot. Um, first of all, the alerts were very poor. I got an email at the same level of my monthly RSA newsletter. Like That's the level of alert it was. So I didn't hear about it. The first full alert I got was an alert on my phone, which I think was part of an emergency system, at 9.30 p.m. And that was the first true alert I received for this thing that started supposedly alerted at 3 o'clock. There was conversation, and I started hearing word of mouth, something's going on in the afternoon. But the alert was very poor. Uh, the information that we received was so filtered, probably by attorneys, nothing personal to attorneys, but so filtered, there was almost no meaningless, meaningful information in it. Like, very little meaningful information, aside from where to get the water that you needed, which was great. But, um, this really created a lack of trust that we were getting in kind of the full story. Uh, so, I know you say the, the public was supportive and great, but if you could see what was happening internally in Lake of the Woods, it was extreme anger, extreme frustration, extreme distrust because we were getting so little, uh, just a trickle of information. Um, and as far as, like, Something triggered the magnitude of eight agencies to be involved, and I just quietly, I saw quietly the EPA appear in the list of agencies. I think it was Sunday morning. Might have been Saturday morning. Saturday or Sunday morning. It, no talk about it, just quietly appeared on the list. And I'm like, okay, this has been escalating quickly, and yet we haven't gotten a single answer of what it was, how it happened, even maybe some educated possibilities. Like you have any agencies and experts, you know that they have a pretty good guess, even if they don't know exactly, they have some theories of how something might have happened. 
And then the other thing is the pipeline. We have a we have a national fuel pipeline, maybe one to two miles upstream from us, not a single update, even address that there was a pipeline. Like that is insane. Like, do people not know that? A lot of residents don't know it. Uh, and I'm sure that's why it didn't get talked about, because then suddenly they wouldn't know about it. But a pipeline a mile upstream of a potential fuel spill, and not even not even some reassurance that we they've inspected the lines, they've, you know, I contacted Colonial myself and I got an answer right away. Like why weren't we given some of those answers through the system? Um, we were told for many, many of the days that no VOCs were discovered in the lab results. Yet the lab report shows three VOCs that are out of line. And Lake of the Woods has one of the highest results. Bromodichloromethane, seven times the acceptable result. Chloroform, 72 times the acceptable, at least the results that are shown in the lab. Chloromethane, two and a half times the acceptable result. And, you know, maybe these are meaningless, maybe they have to do with how they're treating the system, but no one communicated that. So we have no idea. No idea how that's involved in the whole picture. Um, yeah. Anyway. Okay, and then also a week before this event, around the 14th, we received letters about chloroform being out of line with test results, and that they hadn't resubmitted new tests to satisfy um, the state. And this is one of the compounds that was 72 times too high. So we can't really, I mean, obviously this did not start on the 21st. So anyway, I think we have to have some kind of town hall, we have to have some review, accountability. We just need to know what are the events. Even though they don't know everything, there's a lot that can be shared. So thank you. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank you, Supervisor Hale. I do agree transparency is key, and I do look forward to attending your town hall. Um, I wanted to give some background because although this issue um, came to a head in the past week with the situation that we're all aware of, um, there's been several years' worth of issues with RSA. Uh, starting in March 2024, um, the contract was renewed for 15 years. So for everybody in the audience here, we do have another 15 years of putting up with RSA. May 2024, I reached out over concerns about um, halo acetic acids. I reached out to my supervisor. In May 2024, I received a letter from RSA via Supervisor Hale. The letter stated, uh, contrary to what was said in the correspondence sent to you, it is not a known fact that haloacetic acids cause cancer. That statement is not supported by scientific data that I'm aware of. However, evidence was provided in my initial correspondence, um, and it's absolutely degrading that they would just completely ignore the very serious fact that the pollutants in our water does cause cancer. Um, in July 2024, another letter was received from RSA advising um, us that we had an issue, and I sent that to my supervisor, stating prolonged chronic exposure to concentrations may increase dis uh, disease risk. However, the levels in your water are not chronically elevated. There are no known acute health effects from your level, from these levels of paleoacetic acids in your drinking water. So again, they did claim that it, it could increase disease risk, but they wanted to deny that altogether. I did not receive a response from Supervisor Hale, and two weeks ago I received a letter stating that during the June 2024 monitoring period, our waterworks received results of four total coliform positive samples, so this is another pollutant in our water. That was also sent to Supervisor Hale along with the season water use notice. If we're continuing to pay for water that has contaminants in it, there are no repercussions to this poor service. It impacts our health in District 4 and 5, and I do not believe, um, which I, I guess I was corrected recently, but I, I there's a larger population that are serviced by District 4 and 5 that use RSA water. Um, further, they stated in their letter, we do not like to be in violation for any reason. If there's an easy fix, we would have already been done. RSA will continue to do all that we can to lower the halo acid concentration, but may not achieve this fully without the construction of a new water treatment plant and possess uh, processes specifically designed for lowering or removal of HAAs. 
That being said, I'm requesting that this board hold RSA's feet to the fire and begin advocating on behalf of the thousands of constituents. I'm more than happy to help tackle this, um, but it's just, it's unacceptable that we're being subjected to this and there's no real change. Thank you. Good evening. Spotsylvania, Stafford, Fredericksburg, all shut off the water intake from the Rappahannock River when our pollution crisis became evident, sparing their residents uh, expense, anxiety, and hassle. Why didn't Orange County? Because we have no alternate source of water. That's not on you. That's on the ladies and gentlemen who sat in these chairs five, ten years ago and blatantly and negligently ignored the recommendations of the GWAP plan and water and wastewater plan that predicted that we weren't going to have enough water. The crises that come up in three to five years are not on your heads either because the projection is that it takes eight to ten years from inception to a full pool and online of a reservoir. But 10 years out, it will be on you. So what have we done lately? We've approved four or 5,000 new houses or townhouses. We've approved new businesses. We've approved distribution centers. We've approved a water guzzling data center. That's unacceptable. That is absolutely unacceptable. I call on Orange County tomorrow to start planning and budgeting and implementing for an alternate water source so that if something like this comes up again, we have an alternative. Uh, I appreciate uh, the community came together, but uh, uh, will you do what's right for this community or will you kick the can down the road like your predecessors have? Thank you.